Did you know that every element of the periodic table can, is contained within the human body? So that even means we actually contain uranium. So it's kind of like we're stardust. We contain everything in the universe. And most people already know the periodic table. So this is um, a resin feature of every element. There's about 108 different elements. But to show it a bit more um, graphically, at school we all studied the, the um, periodic table. And so this little lecture is going to talk about about four different elements like hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen and oxygen. But then part two, I just want to talk a little bit about this vertical column. They're known as the noble gases or the inert gases. So just wanted to give you a quick rundown on the magic of the periodic table. A bit of physics doesn't hurt anybody. So we're going to start off with the most abundant element in the universe. It's called hydrogen. So hydrogen has one proton, one electron. So its configuration or signature is one, one. And then we move to carbon because every human or earth being is a carbon-based body compared to a silicon-based silicon -based body. So carbon has a signature of in its core, in its nuclear core, it has six protons, six neutrons, but around it, it actually, in the electron shells, there's two shells, it has six electrons. So in a summary, we can say that carbon is expressed as six, six, six. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about the geometric, this is the numerological atomic number, 666, but I want to show you how it exists geometrically. So then we move to nitrogen. So you can predict now that nitrogen has seven protons, seven neutrons, and seven electrons in um, three various shells. And then we go to oxygen, which is what we all breathe, and oxygen has a configuration of 888, eight, eight, because it has eight, electron, uh, eight neutrons, eight protons, and eight electrons in its shell. I'm just going to have a little cough. <coughs> <coughs> oh my God, I'm breathing all the chalk. Mm -hmm. Brilliant boards. Um, okay, um, so I'm going to continue on a little bit about the gym. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to take one specific shape, the carbon. I could talk about the geometry of all of them, but there was an amazing teacher called Dr. Moon. And Dr. Moon, he's the one that invented the cyclotron, which they use in CERN. But he, he was a great sacred geometry teacher, and he taught that every um, element in the periodic table is the nesting of the five platonic solids, like the tetra inside the cube, inside the icosa, right? So if we start thinking now, forget the number 666, but where did that six come from? So we know that there's six neutrons and six protons in the middle, so the sum of the core is 12, 6 and 6. So what two shapes in the five platonic solids, when we look at their vertices, give us 12? So we know that the um, cube has, um, even though it's got six faces, it's got eight corners, eight vertices. And we know that the tetrahedron has four vertices. So what Dr. Moon realised was that the atomic structure and the geometry of carbon was the tetrahedron inside the, oct inside the cube, or hexahedron. So the 4 plus the 8 gave us 12. So even though we're looking at a 2D map of carbon, you really need to think of it as a cube, and inside the cube is the tetrahedron. So the true atomic structure of carbon is, um, we call it TC, tetra inside the cube. A lot of this work by Dr. Moon got shut down by modern day physics, but he's the real hero. He was like the Kepler, like the Pythagoras, that showed us that the key to all atomic structure is the, the nesting of the five platonic solids. So um, now I'd like to move over to, um, and I drew another one. I took oxygen, for example. I won't go into detail, but oxygen, um, so, so carbon, for example, when we write carbon, we call it 12, we've got subscript 12C, because we've got 12 vertices. Well, oxygen is, has an atomic number of 16, so oxygen is called TI, it's a tetra inside the icosahedron. So I've drawn the, the blue tetrahedron, and it's inside a bigger shape. But the ultimate shape in the universe is like gold. Gold has a dodecahedral um, structure. It's, um, that's why the whole world's craving gold because it's um, perfected in the golden ratio dodecahedral vertices. So this is an interesting subject when you learn it properly. And just to get to the other part, um, I wanted to show you what, how in the periodic table, 
when we look at the periodic table, there's a, there's, um, a chart here. The, most, the right hand side is called the inert gases or the noble gases. And the noble gases are interesting. They're all the ones like helium, which is what we're using for balloons, helium. Neon, we use it in lights. And also we've got krypton, which we use in the fluorescent bulbs. Um, and there's argon, which is used in laser beams. And then we've also got um, radon. And radon has the ability in the medical world to kill tumours. That They implant radon seeds into the tumours and it kills them. So these inert gases are really amazing. And the re secret to the... Um, the inert gases or the noble gases. The reason why they're noble is that their atomic structure, you know when we have like a nuclear core and we have various amounts of electrons, you might have three here or two there or six, but the reason why the noble gases are very important and the key is because their outer valency structure, their outer shell is complete, which means they make pure sacred geometry. So, for example, um, the atomic structure of gold in its outer valency structure is a dodecahedron, which means it's in the golden ratio. So I just wanted to give you a quick um, introduction to the periodic table because we go through school learning physics, but we, we don't really understand that it's actually an exciting world in the microscopic universe.